Hello and welcome back to the Dream of Fantastic Dream podcast. Today is April 24th, 2022. And today we will be deep diving into Moon Knight episode four entitled The Tomb. We are your hosts, Armita Flores and Skylar Gifford. And of course, Donovan Rose is here for this very special series. And tonight we are actually joined by a special guest, Rebecca Duan. Welcome. Hi. Hello. We got a lot to break down this episode. Um, but of course, we have to start off as we usually do with our spoiler free review. Who would like to go first with their spoiler free Skylar review? All right. So I'm going to spoil everything. And um, <laughs> last week, 30 last seconds. Week, last week, he was like, oh, yeah, by the way, in my spoiler free review, I'm going to talk about this one scene. And I was like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, I have an issue with this. Uh, no, Rebecca, you go first. What do you think? Oh, God. Um, It was very interesting. Mm hmm. I don't know. I'm a very like I like special effects and I really like yeah. the special effects in this episode was like really good. There was a bunch of jokes on Twitter about everyone being like, oh, so this is why the CGI was so bad. It was all because <laughs> of this scene. They spent the right. whole budget right here. For right. Real. And right. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of it's kind of bad. You I, know? I, I must agree. I must mm-hmm. agree. It, it was great scene mm-hmm. though. So I mean, props to them for making it look mm-hmm. so good. Absolutely. All right, who wants to go next, gentlemen? Um, I I loved it. I thought it was actually super interesting. Um, there's a lot that I'm like really digging about this show. Um, and it really revealed a lot about itself uh, in episode four. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I'm interested just to see. More, more Steven's character on where he goes from here. Not exactly Mark, actually, but like Steven's character arc is just very intriguing. Um, and I've actually, I, I'm loving Layla now. I like had an issue yeah. with her in the beginning. Um, and I really, really like her character. Um, I will admit it does feel a little weird without Conchu. Um, mm, yeah. but mm-hmm. I think, I think that's actually kind of a good thing. Um, because it's now it's more focused just on him uh, Mm -hmm. and their character development like together Um, try not to go further than that you're uh, going into some spoiler territory here (laughs) all right donovan my spoiler free king so comic book fans are going to be not super surprised by how this goes because they're going to be familiar with it but people who haven't read the comics your mind is probably going to be completely blown after watching this episode. (laughs) You're probably just going to be so confused, honestly. (laughs) Literally. Um, But this episode, it was very crazy. It set up a lot and left me with a lot of questions because there are some things even that comic book readers are going to be surprised about. So it threw me for a loop and I'm excited Mm -hmm. to see where it goes from here. Absolutely. I think I I made this comment last week when before episode three sky said to me this episode better bring it or i'm not gonna watch anymore i I remember that he said that last week right so i didn't have the same thought this week however i must say this episode brought it it did yeah it brought it all the way and i loved i i was looking for an episode to beat the first one this was it Mm-hmm. this was yeah, like the far. first yeah, episode too. that i actually like had to put my phone down and stop scrolling through instagram because there wasn't like any boring part mm-hmm. there's nothing boring like, about it oh can't wait for this scene to be over i was just like holy now shit, this i wouldn't happening. i wouldn't sit back and grab a snack for this episode no now, let's no. get a little nasty at yeah. some point so that is definitely a good piece of advice for anyone who hasn't seen it yet don't eat if you are squeamish mm-hmm. um just for a little bit however um i thought every aspect of what people what maybe producers wanted moon knight to be was brought in this episode um and the way that it ends you're gonna want more and more and more and more and more yeah you know you want to know something that's actually crazy to me though is i don't this is kind of not really a spoiler okay so this episode like it is my favorite now but i feel like it had the least amount of actual action in it yeah so far. no absolutely and, and like we didn't see as much of actual moon night like you know, like like you know like, i know it's, it's yeah weird it, it's yeah. actually like you know the actually the character development this, versus like, yeah. yeah this was very much a storytelling episode mm-hmm. 
which I I love the storytelling episodes yeah, much, more just, uh, much more than just the that much more than just a punch my way out of this was this, the episode six of yeah. Book of Boba Fett for for Marvel Studios. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, 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 yeah. absolutely. All righty. So, with that being said, this here right now in this moment is your spoiler warning. I like to draw Rebecca. I'm sorry. I like to draw out the spoiler warning. Go ahead. So then people literally have no excuse. We cannot get canceled by the internet. They will have all this time to exit out and I'm going to keep talking until they do. So there's still going to be that one person. I there's always one person. There's right? always that one we person. Need, like a horn alert. Like, the, like <laughs> literally car, like, we've been talking an air horn. <laughs> yeah. I know we've, we've drawn it out for a good, like at least half a minute at this right. point. And I haven't even started my spiel yet so from here on out we will be discussing all the spoilers from episode four if you have not seen the episode yet feel free to save or bookmark this episode and come back later whatever it is you do to remind yourself that this episode is here um if you continue to listen from this point you will be spoiled and we'll give you a couple of seconds to escape while you can uh in the seconds i'm going to just you know take a personal moment and now they really have left um but yes yeah, it was my last day at work today before i move Nice. Oh. Exciting. Yeah. I just had normal work today. Um, <laughs> it, That's no, gonna but start it's happening. so yeah. bad. I work at a mall. And so like this group of like middle school or like freshman boys like came in and I work at a yogurt land and they were uh, just loitering by the yogurt machines. I know. And we were like, Ugh. what are you doing? And they kept like filling up the cups with yogurt and then walking over to us and be like, oh. I don't want this anymore. And I'm like, Ew. okay, that's like $10 worth of ice Why? cream. Why? All right. Why do little boys? Why do little and boys? No, and then they went into our employees only bathroom. There's like five signs on it saying employees only. And they like threw paper towels everywhere, took the gloves and like filled them with ice cream and threw it at the walls. And I just what stared at it. And I was like, I'm so glad I'm not closing tonight. And I don't right. have to clean this. Good Lord. I was Good like, no, Lord. thank you. Put the wrath of conchu on them literally please <laughs> yeah. someone get mr knight in here no no he beat you nice i need mark yeah, yeah. yeah but it'll be Ooh. funny though yeah, not true. that i encourage violence on children but you know <laughs> i i definitely do i know i definitely do especially all right children. so oh yeah all right so now that they are definitely gone um now it is time to do our spoiler breakdown let's just talk about each character like we usually like to start um I think the star of the show in terms of which Oscar Isaac we got, I actually want to say it's Stephen Graham. Yeah, I love Stephen. Mm-hmm. Stephen mm-hmm. really, really came out in this one for me and I really enjoyed him. I The more that I watch it, the more that I that I love him. Yeah. And yeah. even I went back to episode, I watched one and then four. And I feel like I, I still hate episode one, Stephen. Yeah. I don't know what it, but episode four, Stephen, I was like, Oh my. I think no. it's just it was like, oh, hello. I think it's just because he's like the first, like, actually nerdy history buff yeah. that's ever been on screen. That it's like they didn't really know how to write him in the first episode. Mm, maybe so. So they just like fumbled the ball and then they were, also, like, they got it better as they I, got on with it. I, I also have, I think that what's happening with Steven's character development is that he's a character that has so much bubbling inside him with nowhere to go so he just kind of just in spurts just awkwardly just bounds about the place Mm -hmm. and so it's it's weird and it's uncomfortable to watch and i think that's why he's so repulsive in the first episode but by the fourth he's in his element he gets to go out he's letting that natural energy within him flow a little bit more yeah he's right. so only getting to actually explore his interests yes he gets to kind of be his true self and he's a little more comfortable he's a little more excitable um and as he's learning to figure out himself and what's going on and his place and everything he's starting to kind of be more confident and I think that's what's yeah. getting me that he's like finding some confidence. I think it's also that he's starting to feel more useful because back yes. at his job, he would be like, oh, I want to tell this child about this really cool fact. And everyone yes. would be mm-hmm. like, no, you're not allowed. But now they're yeah. like, oh my God, put away like the bra- like the brawny guy. We need the smart one to come I in here and the solve smart this math. One. Yes. Dude, in the wise like, words of Jared right Covert, now. he is not a pussy in episode four. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, Jared. Jared is currently uh, an hour away from me in Philly right now. And he he's he's in Philly. 
whatever's going on with him, Philly is in his veins, and he's just saying the first thing that comes to the top of his head. So I mean, he already that, tried that to fight a woman that. the first day he got in. So, he tried you know. to fight. He, he's already fought two people oh so far. Gosh, <laughs> he on that Ezra Miller arc. You know, oh! In his era, he's in his he's in his reputation era right now. Yes. Um, anyway, so we had Stephen. Steven's in his reputation era right now. Mark yeah, okay. against against everyone's in their reputation era against Mark Spector. Mm-hmm. No, um, definitely. Because Mark Spector really didn't do much but complain. Literally. No. And threaten to drown them. <laughs> yeah. There, <laughs> yeah. There was a line where Mark said, Are you in love with my wife? And I was like, Well, somebody has to be. Right. It's sure it's not you. And here's my next thought is that who asked out the tour guide from the museum? Because it wasn't Steven. It has to be Jake. It would have been probably the third personality, Jake. But Either Jake or the inner child. Yeah, but I feel like with what we know up to this it was point Conchu. in the show, it was Conchu. <laughs> it was Conchu. Hey He's like, hey, listen, I've I been mean... gone for like a few millennia. I really need to hit someone. Right yeah, now. like I really need to get laid. <laughs> literally but but like my thought process like hearing mark say that i was like because what we what the audience knows up to that point is that it's just steven and mark they Mm -hmm. don't know about jake yet so my thought was you full-on asked out a tour guide and you're complaining about somebody else hitting on your wife there's the door right right. out out with you out with you i don't care at least somebody loves your wife right yeah uh-uh, I was over at least, at least someone's over telling it. her what's going on. And yes. She's not just in the dark. For real. Somebody was like, Stephen Grant is more appealing because he listens to women. Yeah. A concept, perhaps. Um, but yes, um, speaking of women, what a woman we have oh. in Layla. What a woman. She's a bad ass. <laughs> yes, she is. She really brought it in the first five minutes of this episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When she pulled out that dynamite stick, that that flare, and used that to escape, that was genius. And e- you could see Steven even knew it was genius. Right. Yeah. So I will, I love that. I love her development that we're getting. Um, again, like in the first episode, we're, in the second episode when she was being a pain, I forgive her. Yeah. She's justified. Yeah. Her uh, man, absolutely. her husband literally gave her divorce papers and then ghosted Left. her. And then Just ghosted, ghosted her. her. Bye. What an like, answer. And then when he does, he's like, and hello. She, and, she, <laughs> and she did it. Exactly. She's doing it with class and with grace. She's like, yeah. well, here's the papers. If you want to sign them, I'm just trying to find you. Honey, if you ever drop divorce papers at me and ghosted, I would commit murder. Commit until I, crime. I would leave a trail of bodies until I found you. So then you would know that you're next. <laughs> you know, I would love to say that I'm scared, but I already have a death wish. So I mean, oh my god, <laughs> whatever works. If you find me first, that was like, the way it was supposed to she, be. <laughs> she's handling, but all to say, she's handling this with such class. For real, though, she Literally. really is a class act. Um. Arthur, we didn't see much of, but what a what a gaslighter, am I right? For what real a guy. I was so what mad. A what a gaslighter. I mean, he's really doing the whole nine. He gaslights. Really makes me happy. And this is where I'm getting into the <laughs> this I is saw where Skyler I'm... coming out. Oh god, no. I'm trying <laughs> he's to reform my him. Icon, my idol. He is who I've been waiting for this entirety of the last 10 years of the MCU. Oh no. You Steven Grant personified. All right, moving on. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, Arthur really, I think what makes him such a great villain right now is that he's not only gaslighting the main characters, but he's gaslighting the audience too. Mm-hmm. Those who and are- gods, literal and the gods. gods. And the gods too. But I feel like it's breaking that fourth wall of even the audience is manipulated into believing what what he's saying is true yeah so i'm like i it goes it goes into a next like thanos couldn't even convince us that he was right right but at the same time oh except for sky sky thought thanos was right yeah um (laughs) red flag red i guess red flag i agreed with thanos (laughs) Overpopulation that is a bad. football field size red flag. Honey, just associate with less- resources. Honey, just associate with less people. Okay, but fine. resources and killing half of the universe are slightly different. 
Literally, though. Lives are Slightly. expendable. No, they're no, not. They're not. <laughs> anyway. You know, it's expendable land. While well, Sky grows up another. I don't really know how that's going to work. Well, Sky it's tries to. kind of tiny. Well, Sky takes a moment to grow back the three years that he just lost. Um, <laughs> the last character that I did introduce on here is actually Layla's father, Abdullah El Fouli. Because uh, I feel like it's worth mentioning. He was mentioned quite enough times and yeah. he's significant enough to Layla's character art that I thought it was worth mentioning. I hope worth we mentioning. get like some sort of flashback scene. Me too. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. Maybe the like a scene. flashback to, yeah, to when like the group of mercenaries and Mark killed him. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's what that's episode Mark, five that's is, Mark right? That's what their whole is it? Yeah, so then he, yeah. that's when he got saved by conscious. Maybe it's- That's how Mark how died. The, yeah, how yeah. Dad died and all that. Yeah, I, would I was like watching that a, a live stream and they were talking about episode five being like the whole backstory um, of what actually happened with Mark and yeah. her father. Because mm-hmm. we had a theory it was Jake who killed her father, but mm-hmm. now that we know that, that like that's how Mark yeah. got taken by Conshu. So it, it couldn't have been Jake. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, all right. We have um, the next section here is going into what we learned in this episode and just some unanswered questions that we were left at the very end of this. Um, something that we got set, like I just said, something that we got satisfied with was that we learned who actually killed Layla's father and it was not Mark. So he's not as bad as we thought he was. So disappointing. The juicy I'm, drama we could have had. I'm still trying to find a flaw. I'm still trying to, and I will keep looking. Um, so um, but we know we know where it took place. Um, we did see the contact in the phone from mm. the first episode, Duchamp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now I think the theory is for us is does, is there some involvement with that? Okay. Um, alrighty. And uh, what is real? <laughs> Great question, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yeah, no. Because mm-hmm. now we don't know what reality is at this point, which is the very definition of gaslighting. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as as much as the internet loves to throw that word around, this is the exact definition of gaslighting: is making us question saying, what, yeah, what saying reality something is. enough times that you change your your mind starts to be like, did I actually remember that? Exactly. Is that actually, how it happened? Because everyone's exactly. saying it's not, but mm-hmm. I remember it like this. Like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take a tangent here. I'm sorry, somebody who disagrees with you in the way that an event happened in one conversation is not gaslighting. No, it is repeated. It when it's repeated and it makes you question your reality the way that Arthur performed here, that is yes. gaslighting. Yeah. Even if you Same. have like physical evidence, like a video of it mm-hmm. happening, like in the episode one with the security tapes of mm-hmm. like Steven being like, I was chased by this thing. And then everyone was like, uh it's no, gone. you mm-hmm. were acting crazy. Look, look at this footage here. You were being chased by nothing. You were just Multiple, going insane. Yes. And he was like, Am I wrong? I remember it. Like, what is happening? Mm-hmm. Just whole world, like shattering. Whole world, right. world shattering of like what I perceive in the world and what I literally making you question yeah. your own sanity. Yes, of yes. what you remember and exactly. Should you remember it differently because yeah. that's what everyone else is saying. Absolutely. Let's go through the three different scenarios that Arthur has put us through. Um, so everything is made up from the mind of a psych patient, which is Mark. Yes. Um, so that's mm-hmm. one of the scenarios that we saw at the very end with the asylum. Um, so next thing is everything happened up to that point, but when he got shot, he slipped into a limbo state deep in his mind that takes the form of, me- of a mental hospital filled with people and images from his life, like Dorothy from Wizard of Oz showing up as a character that she actually knew, which is a little bit more, a little bit closer to what could have actually happened. Yeah, we don't there is know. more yes. evidence for it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then the third one is Mark Spector has been in the process of dying, a long drawn out process. And this whole show, he has been passing through the field of reads with each of the four episodes being a purgatorial judgment process by Amit before reaching the afterlife. That's what Arthur would want you to think, I feel like. I feel like that is what they're trying to set it up as Mm -hmm. because it also sort of goes along with mythology in the sense that when you do go through the field of reads, you and Amit watch through your entire life to decide. Yeah. Will to weigh your heart against the feather to see where you go. 
So mm-hmm. I feel like it's definitely trying to set it up that way, but then there's going to be some sort of twist towards the end to show us that's not Abs- what's been happening. I mean, there was a all. whole like, oh, yeah. you know, the, the hallway yeah. was shown when it was like tilted and everything, like all the all the stuff was like going yeah. back and forth. And then I saw this thing. It was like, oh, it could be like they were on the ship or the boat going to the going through the afterlife yeah. to get to Amit. Oh. I thought it was more like they were on the scale as they were like weighing oh, yeah, the yeah. heart and the mm-hmm. feather. And it was like trying mm-hmm. to balance itself out. Because mm-hmm. you can definitely still change your entire placement while you're in the field of reeds. Mm-hmm. That's All definitely right. a possibility. Yeah, and that leads us right into this next question. One of the unanswered questions that we have is: Could the facility that Mark is trapped in be the version of hell in his mind? Maybe. Yeah, I would assume. I mean, there's so many. There's so many. I'm sure he does feel clinically insane having mm-hmm. multiple people in his head at all times. Donovan, I have, after we're done with this section, I have multiple questions for you. Um, okay. Uh, could each person passing through the afterlife perceive it in a different way? Like the ancestral plane in Black Panther or the psych ward in Moon Knight or the soul world from Infinity War and Endgame, which could identify a line by set, uh, a line set by Hera, which is no tree can ascend to the heavens without reaching the, the depths of hell. Oh, yeah. I think so. Really interesting. Yeah, I like that That a would lot, make actually. more sense. Mm-hmm. Especially um, if they're doing the field of rigs as being like a sort of purgatory while um, mm-hmm. it decides your fate. Ooh. You just live in like what your version of hell would be while exactly. Amit decides. Because again, you can change your fate while being in the field of reeds. So yeah. by putting you in your personal hell, it can definitely like change how you would, what your final decision would be of where you go Absolutely. based on how you react. Absolutely. So, yeah. And going, uh, if we're in, if we are in purgatory, I think we're going with this purgatory idea here. Um, as far as such as this discussion goes, um, so if we are seeing other gods, could we see Khonshu? Maybe. Are we going to run really into our want old pal? To. I feel like that's going to happen because if they, they, they showed, uh, what was her name? Tut? Tarwet. Tarwet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They showed her and she was, she was one of the statues uh, in the beginning. So I just, mean, just just call her the hippo. Save yourself the pain of pronouncing her name and just say the, the hippo. hippo. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Hysterical. I want to know what the other gods did that was so bad to make them into the statues. Real. My thing is, or I'm, even if it was bad, because what Khonshu did didn't even seem like that bad, especially because this is the Marvel universe after yeah. Endgame has happened to the point where everyone's so desensitized to it that they're just like, oh, would you look at that? Something's a hippo. happening. Cool. Oh, a that hippo. they were like, that that doesn't seem that bad in the grand scheme of everything that's yeah. happened the past few years in the MCU. Right. So that's what, what did the other gods do? Yeah, I kind of like that kind of going off of that and then just kind of flipping the other side of that coin. I kind of like seeing the two Oscar Isaacs react to yeah. seeing that hippo because I feel like for us, we were like, oh, hippo. Oh, we're like, oh, what like, is that cool. Egyptian god that's a hippo? <laughs> we're, like, that's, we're like, that's cool. But then I literally, see, I literally put in on Google right after watching, what is the Egyptian and autofilled god? That we did that, hippo. yeah. And I was like, everybody oh, was doing everyone it. Everyone else had the exact same. But <laughs> that's the thing, is that in episode one, when I rewatched it, Stephen the actually there, little stuffed yeah. animal. He hauls yeah. up the stuffed animal of Tarwet. And he's well, like, I'm, oh, look, yeah. a hippo. And I was like, well, what? Well, when he was you like, see, oh, look, it's Tarwet. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you see his manager in the episode holding the hippo. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I thought she was and holding he said, a scarab, wasn't it? A scarab. No, she was no, it was holding someone a hippo. else was holding the scarab. She's holding the, the scarab hippo. was a different person. And he literally goes, "Oh, that's Tarwet." Yeah. Like he knows exactly who she is, and that's why he kind of waves at her while he's screaming. It makes it even better that in the first episode you see Stephen standing in front of the nine pantheon gods of Egypt and yeah. pointing out why it's wrong. And then we're assuming that we're going to see those gods later in this mm-hmm. series, if we haven't already with yeah. their, with their um, vessels in the pyramid. I sure hope so. I but hope we get to see more god forms. It's, they are I, so f- cool. I like the idea of, you know, Khonshu is banished and he's literally a bone. Yes. But, but Tarwet is a fully realized animal. Mm-hmm. So my question is, when a god is banished, do does their body deteriorate as if they're dead possibly i would lo- and then that makes me wonder what did concha look like before he turned into a 
desecrating corpse. Probably a hawk. Because he has the head of a hawk in he mythology. Does. Yeah. But then then that begs the question, what kind of hawk? Like a red yeah. tail hawk? Because they're quite prevalent in that yeah. area of the world. Can you imagine his wingspan? Oh, that would be cool. Ooh. That would be awesome. That would be so, so cool. All right. Um, and last little thing, an unanswered question. Could Mark get the powers of Moon Knight back in the psych ward? And maybe mm. is that what he will use to his advantage to escape? Ooh. Maybe that, I just I I just want to see Mr. Knight again. I know <laughs> real, Mr. Though. Knight is so awesome, honey. You have to hold me back when we meet Mr. Knight in Avengers Campus. Okay. That's if it is Mr. Knight. Because yeah, half the time true. it's Moon Knight, half the time it's Mr. Knight. Yeah, it's half. It's half and half. If but I'm gonna yeah. be honest, I'd rather be Moon Knight rather than Mr. Knight. Moon Knight looks yeah. so cool. He's really cool, but he don't say nothing. He's just like I'm Mark Spector. I'm mean. I don't listen to women. <laughs> I wonder if Jake, when he, when if they get the Moon Knight suit uh-huh. back, I wonder what his suit will look like. Oh, I wonder if we'll get one. I, I saw because there was in the Moon Knight poster there was three. Yeah, there was Mr. Knight, there was Moon Knight, Moon Knight and then there, and then was, there was Oscar a, Isaac. A, yeah. I kind of don't want him to have a third. I kind of want him just to be that character. Yeah, it'll be it'll be Spider Verse all over again. Oh, oh no. my god! How many versions are Three there? Save it for Comic Con. <laughs> it's just save it for Comic Con, man. Absolutely, they'll, they'll figure it out for you. Alrighty, so we are moving on. Let's go into mythology now, Rebecca. I heard you you know quite a lot about this stuff, so I will give the the where is it the talking stick to you. 